Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Gerbil. Profundity has been out for a few weeks now, and so it's time to talk seriously about how to beat the three dominant defensive squads. Those are obviously mirror matches against other Profundities, Executor, and of course the Negotiator, which still lingers here and there. All right, this video is a real work of art for me. It took a long time to produce, so if you appreciate it, do me a quick favor, please, and hit that like and subscribe. It would be very, very much appreciated. All right, let's get started, shall we? So to kick this off, let's first start by looking at a Profundity versus Executor battle. All right, this is probably the most common battle you're going to see for the next six months to a year, maybe, as most people don't have Profundities yet. As I'm going to say throughout this video, you really don't need reinforcements when you get your profundity unlocked to seven stars and you have dash rendar han solo chewbacca the only three pilots you're going to need besides radis you get them up to all relic seven and beyond and three is all you need that saves your phoenix your u-wings and your x-wings all to stay with home one now what can that beat i don't know i'm still experimenting a lot with raven's claw but I have been putting it on defense in Grand Arena, and I don't know if it held yet because of the current bug. Nonetheless, here we go. We are one minute into this battle. I have not called a reinforcement. The Falcon is starting to take a little bit of a beating, but it is in no way actually in danger. Notice how quickly its shields regenerate. So I'm gonna talk about the proper turn orders here in a few minutes, but before we get to that, we are going to kind of discuss some general strategy tips that uh, are good to know against any fleet, regardless where you are in your fleet shard or grand arena or territory battles or wars or whatever. There's some generic turns and orders that you need to be aware of, and I'll try to explain those. All right, this one's almost over. Here we go, we've got rid of the enemy capital ship. We still have not called a reinforcement. Notice my fleet status. I have full health and protection on everybody. Just so you know, that was a Relic 9 Piet, a Relic 9 Bosk, a Relic 8 uh, uh, Cad Bane, and a Relic 8 Mandalorian. And there we go. Okay, so let's get this going, shall we? So the Profundity Kit, when it dropped, Capital Gain suggested you run these three starters and the Phoenix Squad. Turns out that was spot on. But Phoenix is not really needed, and there's a good debate to be had. Should you have Ghost or the Phantom as the first reinforcement, if you even run a reinforcement? My recommendation actually is the Phantom, because while the Ghost is a decent ship, its reinforceability lowers the cooldowns on your capital by one for the reinforcements. You can do it again back to back, uh, but you don't need to call reinforcements, and Secondly, the Profundity's abilities, its specials, are better than calling a reinforcement a lot of times. So calling one is, un is maybe needed, calling two is almost certainly unnecessary, and the Ghost is going to do more for you than Phantom will in terms of winning the match, which I'll explain how. Now, of course, if you don't have seven stars or high relics on all your, your characters, then having Cassian uh, or possibly Biggs as an optional reinforcement is not a bad idea. Cassian, of course, cleanses the enemy's lineup so that you get rid of all the buffs, especially against Malevolence. That can be very helpful so that you cleanse off all those droids and everything. Um, I guess it's that energy stack, whatever it is. Uh, Biggs is good uh, possibly in mirror matches, but I'm going to show you what happens typically when I see Biggs as we get to that video. As far as Biston, the Claw, and Wedge, it's kind of like a no. There's almost no reason to go there. Um, so the five starters, the two backup, are five really needed? Yes, but I think for the most part it's overkill. Now your mileage may vary. I understand that. Um, I have spent a lot of time trying to optimize this to learn how, and that's why I'm sharing this video. So five is good, but I'm saying three. Is that really viable? Uh, my answer is yes. All week, this th GAC in the 3v3 week one, I won three for three matches with no reinforcements against executors. Uh, pretty sure I got max banners plus the bonus banners. So with that, I'm going to caveat again. 
Terms and conditions may apply. Your mileage may vary. For more questions, contact a Corellian Freighter dealership near you. How and why does this work? How, I mean, how are you winning with only three ships and no reinforcements? Well, first off, Profundity has some crazy powerful kits. Um, but Rebels, for the most part, will often be faster than your opposing team. I'm going to share the speeds in a second. Cargo ships, as well as the Y-Wing, are specifically immune to critical hits, which means they become very, very durable. They can take a pounding. There's a lot of health and protection recovery in the starting lineup with Profundity. And so essentially what you want to do is just survive and thrive until you get to trigger the ultimate, at which point you will probably win and you can actually slow down and heal your team for those max banners. Mirror matches is the tricksy one. And I'm gonna show you two videos of that in just a moment. All right, so how do you win? Well, it's a race to the ultimate. If you can get to that ultimate before your opponent, and you should always be able to, you are all but guaranteed to win. Why? Obviously they lose their capital ship. Also, your ships go into damage immunity for a turn, and they start taking 35% max health damage every single turn. So as time passes, they eventually die no matter what. Um, they won't die to that effect, but they will be at almost zero life and you will be able to kill them in one shot. So how do you get to that ultimate? Well, the trick to ultimate is through abilities and through assists. There are three abilities that add to the download for the Profundity's ultimate. It's got to hit 100% download. Its basic will give it a 10% download. Its first special will give it a 10% addition to its download. And then the Outrider has a special called Emergency Repairs, which grants 20% download instantly. In addition, every time a rebel assists another rebel, you will gain 1%. That sounds insignificant, but believe me, you can assist as much as 12 or 13 times in one turn. It happens quite frequently. All right, there are some caveats, some things you need to be aware of though to maximize your efficiency with this fleet. First off, as I said, download is your number one priority. Almost no matter what is happening, your objective is to get 100% download for both the Profundity's ultimate and so that the Outrider can trigger its suppressor or whatever supercomputer ability that it has. The profundity speed will change depending on the opposing fleet that you're fighting. So that can throw off your turn uh, order. So don't just rely on muscle memory to slam through because it's very possible you'll make a mistake. There can be no turn meter manipulation while profundity is present. This is big and it will cripple a lot of your own ships like the U-Wings that have a lot of turn meter bonuses and wedge when he attacks on a turn. So be aware of that. It even affects the Outrider when you're starters because his first special concussion missiles grants turn meter but not with profundity. Of course, it also affects the opposing team so it really, really like screws over Houndstooth, right? Um, however, while you cannot manipulate turn meter, you can still gain speed up, which is a 25% increase to your speed, and that comes from Outrider. You need to try to do that as much as possible. Again, cargo ships and the Y-Wing are crit hit immunity, so you're good. Something else very important to keep in mind is that the Millennium Falcon's basic dispels enemies and the Outrider deals true damage every time it deals special or normal damage. This is actually really important. We may talk more about that in a moment, but the speeds for your line. Outrider is your fastest. It's going to go first almost every time, depending on the enemy fleet, of course. Um, the Second is the Falcon at 199 max speed. This is, of course, with Relic 8 pilots or Relic 9 pilots, I guess. And then the Y-Wing, which has no pilot, maxes out at 174. Profundity's max speed is 194. However, for each enemy dark side ship, he will gain 10 speed for one turn only. That is essentially going to push him at the top to go before the Outrider against fleets like Executor, Chimera, Executrix, Malevolence, right? So be aware when you go against Negotiator, Outrider will go first, Dark Side Fleets, Profundity will go first. Makes a tiny difference. Now that assist mechanic is the key to success. 
every single attack that lands a critical hit, Profundity has a 20% chance to call a random assist. That is anybody on the board, including itself. There is no limit to this. So theoretically, you could land 20 or 30, though it's statistically not probable. So don't, don't hope for that. The Outrider is going to attack multiple times on its basic three shots, five times on its concussion missiles. So if those land crits, that is multiple instances of damage, multiple chances for profundity to call assists. The Falcon, of course, will always 100% chance call an assist on its basic. And whenever another ally uses a, an ability on their turn, it has a 50% chance to attack once. But of course, if it does, it's going to call an assist. And then whenever any rebel ally, including the capital ship assists, the Y wing has a 35% chance to assist with it. So again, incredible potential. Some other general things to keep in mind. The Outrider grants the speed up, like we said, you need to take advantage of that because you cannot manipulate the turn meter. Uh, the Hans Millennium Falcon, typically you want to do the dance, the watch this move or whatever. You do not want to do that almost ever here. Of course, if you're on the brink of losing the ship, you do want to heal. But one of the things that made that effective is that he usually took another turn after it by gaining turn meter. That will not happen here. You will simply lose your turn and cleanse any buffs, debuffs, and heal. Um, you don't want that. The Y-Wing uh, is absolutely 100% the better tank than Biggs with the Profundity. So please just run these three and you will not regret it. Don't rely on shield disruption ability from the Y-Wing. It seems to have a pathetically low chance of landing. All right, now with all of that stuff said, let's get to some actual matchups and understand how these work. So we're going to start with Executor because of course that was the name of the game for the last year. So the Executor, here's the way it works. Kill order. Number one, you want to kill Xanadu Blood almost every time, number one, and you can frequently do it in one shot if your pilots are high. I have a Relic 7 Dash, Relic 8 Han, Relic 7 Chewy, and I kill Xanadu probably 50% of the time on my opening turn. So, number one, Profundity will go first because of the dark side enemy ships. You want to do the fleet has arrived move. Yes, this is the healing move, but this is what you want because it will take Xanadu out of stealth and mark him so that your first attack will come from the Outrider. Do the concussion missiles, that's five hits. It will reduce the defense of the Xanadu. And then if you're lucky, you'll get assist, assist, assist and pop it. However, if it survives, Hans Millennium Falcon will go third. You need to just use a basic. No dance. Don't dance. Don't AOE. Just the basic. The basic guarantees at least one assist. Hope for Y Wing to assist. Hope for a critical to get an assist from Profundity. And Xanadu is dead almost always. After that, you're looking usually at Houndstooth and the uh, Raven, Razor Crest. You want to try to dis use shield disruption on Razor Crest and get some assists to do as much health damage as you can before the Houndstooth takes a turn. After this, unconventional maneuvers from Profundity get a million assists by targeting the Outrider who will attack six times twice, but three times each from its basic. Then when the Outrider gets its second turn, emergency repairs, no matter what, emergency repairs. It doesn't matter if you are at full health and protection, emergency repairs, because you want the 20% download. When Profundity takes its third turn, you may be tempted to call an, uh, a reinforcement. You probably don't need to. Instead, assess the state of the board, use the basic, gain 10% download, and target ally will immediately gain 100% turn meter, even though it's not turn meter, it just takes a bonus turn. So use that, for example, on the Falcon to remove buffs from an opponent or from the Outrider to reduce its cooldowns to do emergency repairs again as quickly as possible. Here's how this looks in play. It's gonna be kind of a long video, folks. All right, so we're going against Snow here on the left. All right, taking out everybody but Phoenix. But again, all of these videos, I'm not gonna call any reinforcements. And FYI, I recorded these all today, like same day, just to prove the viability. So we took Xanadu out of stealth, we marked it, concussion missiles, sadly we got no assists. Falcon did a basic, killed Xanadu. 
exactly like we want. All right, Houndstooth did not get any bonus turn meter because it can't be manipulated. So now Y-Wing is going to remove all shields, hopefully with shield disruption, which we got. But at this point, Houndstooth does taunt. So we go in and we use the uh, whatever that was to get two turns from Profundity targeting Outrider. Outrider does the repairs, pumping up the, the uh, download mechanic. All right, so... Now, at this point, it's kind of late in the game. I did use the dance, which of course I said not to, but that's mostly because I was pretty low on life and I wanted to try to strip away the taunt from Houndstooth. So I needed to get rid of Breach and didn't really matter. So you can see why maybe it's not a good idea usually. The assist would have, the attack with the assist would have called crits, which would have regenerated my shields. So tough choice there. Now we can go for concussion or we can heal. I was already at full health. I healed. Why? So that I can do this. Bye bye executor. Download is your priority. The concussion missile looked like a great opportunity. We can hit somebody, maybe even kill IG. Doesn't matter. If we get rid of the enemy capital, you win. Take the win, right? So, at this point, we can probably just move on, but I'm going to go ahead and let it play out just so we can see the full banners in response. All right. Bye-bye, IG. And again, notice I'm still doing basics rather than assists. Why? Because it continues that download again for Outrider to use the Suprosa computer or whatever it is. All right, nice little heal mechanic there. I'm just doing another heal. Why? I'm trying to recover banners. So even though I've got the win, I'm just healing and healing to get all my banners back. If this was GAC, I would have got the full max banners plus the bonus. This was simply arena, so it doesn't matter. All right, next, Profundity versus Profundity Mirror Match. This one gets tricksy. So your Outrider is going to go first because the profundity is slower if there's no dark side enemies. So first and foremost, you wanna repair. I know, it's weird. Turn one, repair. Why? Because it gives you 20% download and speed up. The computer is not, the AO, AI on the enemy team is not going to do that because nobody has been damaged. So you will immediately have a 20% download advantage on the AI. Also, well, we'll get there in a second. Falcon, basic to call assists. Profundity goes next. Unconventional maneuvers. This is the one that is going to choose a target to attack twice, right? So you're going to get a double assist targeting the Outrider. Hopefully you're going to get a Falcon assist because you have a 50% chance that it assists with the capital, 50% chance that it assists with the Outrider the first time, 50% chance that it assists the second time. Now it will only assist once, but that's almost a guaranteed likelihood that it will assist between one of those three instances. That assist will call another assist. Each of those assists has a chance to call the Y-Wing to assist. For every critical hit, Profundity again says 20% chance to call more assists. This is where you can get 12 to 13 attacks in one turn, which of course is 12 to 13 percent download. All right, let's see how this plays out. Your kill order is Y-Wing. You need to get rid of the Y-Wing because the Y-Wing is the healing, like the path to healing. Another reason you don't want necessarily a reinforcement here is if you call in Biggs, Biggs is the only ship here that could be critically hit. Remember, Y-Wing and freighters or cargo ships cannot be critically hit and that is how you regenerate health or protection on your fleet whenever a ship is critically hit the y ring restores 20 percent protection so if everybody has crit hit immunity there's no protection recovery so if you do call in bigs you are granting the opportunity for your opponent to heal all right, so see how using that unconventional whatever, we got a lot of attacks into the Y-Wing and we killed it. Now that Y-Wing is out of this, this is pretty much game over already. We've got, we've got the win here. All right, now, my Y-Wing is getting dangerously low, so we're going to heal up a little bit. That also gives us offense or critical damage up. Now watch Biggs. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom, boom. Dead. That is the effectiveness of Biggs. And by the way, that was a Relic 5 Bigs, I think. All right, there goes the Outrider and it's game over. Once Outrider goes away, your opponent has zero chance to outrun you in terms of the download mechanic. 
It's just absolutely not going to happen. So, can you still get full banners against Profundity? It's a whole lot harder because you can't heal your protection. Nonetheless, there we go. Easy cheesy, no reinforcements. All right, next, Negotiator. Not a lot to say about this one. It's a really easy matchup. I'm not going to go through the turn order here. Take a screenshot if you want. Basically, it's very similar. You want to heal, get the download, basics from the Falcon, unconventional maneuvers to try to kill somebody, shield disruption, take out targets of opportunity. More than anything, it's a game of target of opportunity. So let's see how this plays. We're in territory battles or territory war here. So my opponent, um, I didn't even see what they had, but we're just going to go with the standard lineup here. So we got Falcon, Outrider, Wide Wing, and two reinforcements who are wholly unnecessary against Negotiator. Now, is it possible that you lose? Of course it is. If RNG does not work out for you, yes, of course, things could go south real fast. If you just never roll any assists, and um, like especially uh, against Chimera, there is an there is a chance that you could lose, but it's I think it's like close to zero, close to zero for the most part. Executor can beat you. I have lost twice since Profundity came out. Twice, if that's an indication of anything. And that's when your RNG just absolutely does not land any assists. Things go as slow as possible, and your opponents manage to land some solid hits. Again, they can't credit you, so you just got to roll high. All right, so see, we opened up on Anakin. We can't take him down, of course, because he's got that uh, revive mechanic, whatever it is. It's been so long since I played at, in, uh, against Negotiator. I can't even remember what it's called. Unending Loyalty, I think. So we're spreading out the damage here. And we're going to heal up, even though we don't need to heal. Oh, no, actually we're not. We're going to take a kill, I think. So we're going to target, I think, the Falcon, because it was at 0% turn meter almost. So we just get an extra turn. Again, the Falcon's going to call an assist. But no, I chose, in this case, the rare opportunity to do an AoE. AoEs are not bad. This is why Ghost is actually okay, if you need to call a, re a reinforcement. Because the AoEs are multiple damage instances. Again, that's multiple opportunities for crits, which is multiple opportunities for an assist. So I had a choice there. I could one-shot, kill, and get an assist, damage one enemy, or I can AoE, potentially kill one ship, which I did, hit the other two, hopefully get a, a assist out of Y-Wing and Profundity. Didn't work out, got no assists. So, but there it is. Solid win, full health, full protection, no reinforcements, job done. All right, we're going to look at one more mirror match against Profundity. In this situation, I'm going to play it slightly different. Instead of the unconventional maneuver or whatever it is, I'm going to instead use the fleet has arrived. Now, it's worth also noting that fleet, the fleet has arrived it, well, here, we'll get there. Okay, so here we go. Outrider goes first, heal. Again, you want that speed up. This is how we're going to outrun the opposing team. Gets us out ahead of them. So my Y-Wing definitely goes first. He did a dance. Bad idea, because you just lose a turn from the Falcon. So here we go. Instead of the unconventional, I'm going to do the Rebel Fleet has arrived. Now this one will not remove or buffs from enemy Rebels. It only targets non-Rebels. So by doing that, I definitely lost assist opportunities. Whereas I should have, as I said, had the Outrider hit six times. Now, another reason I talked earlier about the Outrider, every time it deals damage, it's dealing true damage. This is really important because you cannot critically hit these enemy cargo and Y-Wings. So what you can do though, is land as many Outrider attacks as you can, because like on the basic, each normal hit is gonna only do two to 3,000 damage, but, the true damage will be 7,000 plus each time. So you're gonna land a lot more damage with Outrider than you will your other ships against Profundities. All right, we saw Biggs come in, and once again, we saw him fall over flat. It just doesn't do anything. Here we go, we're gonna heal up. Profundity should now be at 100% download. Basic with the assist. I don't even think, oh yeah. 
I was gonna say, I don't even think we're gonna get to use the ultimate here, but yeah, we will. Oh, we're not there yet, 85%. All right, so let's target the Falcon, so the Falcon can attack and guarantee an assist, but it was a kill shot, so we didn't get any assist. All right, here we go, concussion missiles. This will give us five hits, five instances of true damage, and wow, look how fast that little phantom is going down. Hey folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it was helpful. Let me know if you disagree or you'd like to add to this in the comments. I will definitely try to answer any questions you have. And uh, please give me that like and subscribe. It really, really would mean a lot to me. And I will see you all later. Stay tuned. There will be more goodness coming as soon as I can. Until then, good luck on the battlefield and may you win every profundity engagement with always almost max banners and only three ships. All right, bye-bye.